Hey everyone. So this video here, I'm really excited to have done. I've been requested it a few times actually. And in this video, we're gonna go over how to remove stickers from factory sealed games and then how to clean the factory sealed games. And this is a great skill to have because then you can bypass paying WADA or VGA to remove your stickers for you or to clean your games for you. The video starts off with three sticker removals. I then quickly show you what not to do with the goof off. And then we move into how to clean the games. If you just wanna see the cleaning, you can jump to about the 15 minute mark and watch from there. But I highly encourage you watch the whole thing as there's a lot to learn. And I just wanna say this before you get into it, you're gonna watch this and I might make it look really easy and really safe to do, but please practice on something cheap first before you go ahead and wreck a game with a lot of value. I have personally cleaned and removed stickers from hundreds of games, but I have also wrecked a lot of games that have cost a lot of money. So just keep that in mind. You have been warned, be careful out there. Let's get into the video. All right, welcome to the workstation. Before we get going, I'm gonna show you guys the tools of the trade that you're gonna need to make this work. First off, we have the girlfriend's hairdryer. Made to work, made to last. If you don't have a girlfriend you can borrow one from, there's never been a better time to call up your mom and tell her you love her. Next tool up is goof off. Fun to play with, not to eat. If you're familiar with paint thinner, it has the same properties as that. With goof off though, you have to remember this stuff is extremely corrosive. That's why I have this placemat set down right here. This will likely even eat through the placemat. So you have to be very deliberate and very careful with your application of it. If you've never worked with this stuff before, do it on something cheap first. I can't stress that enough. Next is rubbing alcohol, which is not nearly as dangerous as the goof off, but still gets the job done. Old reliable, preferably Charmin, but if you can't get the good stuff, then the off-brand stuff will get the job done too. And last of all, we have Q-tips, and these are gonna be used for the more intricate application of both goof off and rubbing alcohol. So now we can bring in our first candidate for removal. We have Zelda Spirit Tracks on Nintendo DS. And the sticker in question is this one right up here. And just going from personal experience, this is a weak sticker. This shouldn't be an issue at all. It's a nice novice level start off one. To begin here with this one, I'm actually just gonna try using goof off and see if that alone is enough to get rid of it. So here. Again, when you're using the goof off, this stuff is highly corrosive. It can screw up things very easily. I can't even open the can because it has a child safety lock on it. Give me one second. And I use goof off for the sticker removal, but I've also heard that lighter fluid works really well. You can probably find other tips online about things that people use, but I have gotten very comfortable with using goof off and it's my go-to now. So now this is where we're gonna start to use these Q-tips because I just wanna put it directly onto the sticker rather than the whole game. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and dip it in the goof off here. And again, this goof off acts a lot like gasoline or paint thinner in that once you get an item wet with it, you can see here, once the Q-tip is wet with it, it's gonna evaporate very quickly. So here, I'm gonna show you the application of it. And it's okay if you miss a little bit, except you have to be extremely certain that you don't have any kind of rips, holes, or tears around here. Because if this goof off were to go through the wrap of the game, it would cause damage. So here you can see it's nice and wet and I'm actually gonna do a second application. I wanna make sure it's nice and soaked through. So again here, bring it up. I'm just gonna, oh, you can see it's running there, right? I'm gonna stop that run. You don't want it to be too, too, too wet. I want it soaking through. I don't want drips though to run down the game. Sorry, there we go, get you back in camera. Okay, so it's nice and wet now. Now what I'm gonna do, move this stuff out of the way, is let it dry for a second. And very carefully, I'm gonna reach at it with a nail and get a lip of the sticker. Now you have to be very careful about doing this too. You wanna be very deliberate with your peeling because you don't wanna grab the wrap. You just wanna grab the sticker. As soon as you have it up a little bit, you can see I have a little bit of a lip there on the sticker now, right there, just a little bit of a lip. So now that that little bit of lip exists, I just want to grab it and you can see the sticker comes right off, just like that. And like I said, this is a very easy sticker. I could tell that just by looking at it. There's different types of stickers. That one was applied very late in life. And you can see right here where the sticker was. It's gonna leave a very little imprint, of course. That's kind of inevitable, but you are not gonna be docked by VGA or WADA or something like that. That is just how it happens. So there's our very first one removed. And going from there now, I'll just put this sticker over here, we can see. 
So next one up here, we have Miss 3 Exile. And the sticker in question is actually extremely similar. I think it's the exact same type of sticker as the first game had. So I'm just going to take it out of this plastic casing here. And we can see the sticker again. Exact same kind. So this time I'm just going to try heating it up and we'll see if it peels just as easily as it did when I used the goof off. So you're going to get the sweet, sweet sounds of 80s synthwave while I applied the hairdryer. Okay, so while it's super hot here, I'm gonna quickly go in there and again and look for a lip. Now that we've reactivated the sticker more or less, see what kind of lip I can get on it. See, and here's the difference now, right? I'm gonna heat it up again. You can see that it's gonna start peeling, right? It's starting to peel, but it's already leaving residue behind. Like if I were to peel this now, look, let's see what happens. So here goes the peel of the sticker, look. Oh, that sucked. No way, right? Terrible. That's not what you want to happen when you remove them. You want to take it all as one piece. Now, again, this is a very easy sticker. You're not gonna really ruin the game or do anything with removing this, but. So I'm just gonna put the hair dryer aside and I'm gonna take out the goof off again. And the hair dryer didn't work there because I couldn't get good enough of an edge. I find the hairdryer super effective for larger surface area stickers where you're going to be peeling it whilst applying goof off at the exact same time. And then when you heat up the, when you heat up the adhesive, it becomes loose. But on these super small stickers, it's kind of easier to just use goof off right on them. And you can see with the residue that was left behind, you can easily just wipe it with goof off and it'll take it right off. Like sticker residue isn't, doesn't matter at all with goof off. You can see. I'm just gonna apply it again here and then I'm gonna grab it from the other end and grab a new lip on the sticker and we'll remove it that way. So again, being kind of generous with the application, I wanna make sure the sticker's nice and soaked through. So even if you screw up the initial, it's not a big deal. So long as you aren't picking your nail into the actual wrap, you're not gonna do any kind of actual damage to it. Now that it's nice and wet again, I'm gonna look for a lip on a different corner. And again, be very soft with this. You're not looking to dig into the plastic, you're just looking to get the sticker. Cut your nails down so that you have just a little bit lasting. And then once you can get to a little bit of a lip up, once you can get your little bit of lip, I don't even know if you can see how small the lip is. I'm just gonna pinch it now with both nails and begin a peel process. And you can see that the sticker, now the issue we had there, right? It's getting hung up where we had screwed up with the hair dryer. So I'm gonna have to grab another lip of the sticker. And there we go. Now we have two lips. So I'm gonna grab it again here. And that, this happened because of where the sticker had natural perforations. So this sticker had perforations. If you can see them, there's a perforation right here and there were two on the either side of the sticker. So that's why it ripped the way it did there. The first one didn't because I did it as a very clean removal. And again, it's okay. Now that the goof off is soaked right into the sticker, you can just grab it at another lip, lift and peel. And there you can see. Again, you're gonna get a little outline of where the sticker was. And this one has a little bit of residue on it still too, if you can see right there, a little bit of residue. But I'm gonna show you how to clean that as well. That's why we have the Charmin with us. So we can just quickly grab some Charmin and wipe that off. And I'll show you what that looks like right after we do the next sticker. Now the next one here is probably the highest stakes game out of all the ones I'm gonna show you today. And this is the Pokemon Red. It's not sealed, it is open but I do want to submit it for grading inside of the wrap since I think the wrap is in really awesome shape and it's a vertical seal. So we're dealing with this one now. 
And this one is a red sticker. And red stickers are gonna bleed color way more than white ones did. So now you really wanna be careful about your application of the goof off. And now that we're dealing with cardboard, here's what you really, really, really need to take into account. So I'm dealing with cardboard. So the first thing I need to do is locate my vent holes. And you can see that I have vent hole right here and a vent hole right here. And this one right here is actually terrible positioning because this could easily get fucked up by the goof off. And I have a vent hole right here. So this is actually gonna be kind of tricky because I have to be very deliberate with my application. Any kind of runoff that goes into this hole right here will cause damage to the box, either of these. Goof off will instantly damage it. You cannot reverse it. So let's grab our goof off. And again here, I'm gonna keep this flat because I don't want any kind of runoff to occur. So I'm just gonna dab it on. And look, you can already see how much it's bleeding. You see how that instantly ate through the sticker? So you're gonna need to do a couple of applications here to eat through this sticker first, all the coloring, and then you might need to reapply to get the sticker itself, the adhesive. So I'm just gonna take some of this color with me and not even focus about really applying the goof off right now. And it's okay if you get some color bleed on the wrap itself, you just cannot get it into any kind of holes. On the wrap itself, we can just clean it off afterwards. Not a big deal. I'm just gonna grab another Q-tip. Oh, just about knocked over the goof off. And now again, the big issue with where these vent holes are located is it makes it very hard for me to be able to build a lip. So I'm gonna try soaking this very bottom corner. Cause this is the lip where I'm gonna try to attack at. Once you get the initial sticker lifted, it's not so bad to just continue the lift but I hate the positioning of this and I hate the positioning of these holes. So you can see that now the color of this sticker is almost fully eaten on the side that I've been applying to. So let's do this. And I'm gonna actually try to get a lip now on this side. And again, be super soft with your nail. You don't want to dig into the box. You don't want to dig into the wrap. You don't want to do anything like that. There we go. Look at that. Where's the sticker here? Can you see the lip I got on it? You might not be able to. I have a, I have a corner started. I have the lip made. So now, again, I'm going to take my fingers. I take my two nails and I pinch them together like this so that I can grab that very little lip. So I'm gonna grab that lip. This sticker is brittle. Grab the lip. Okay, so look. Again, this sticker had a natural perforation in it. So you can see that this lifted up whilst staying down. So what I'm gonna do is curl the sticker over like this to work with those perforations because I don't wanna cause any actual ripping with the sticker. I just want the whole thing to come off in one piece. And there you go. So now you can look at it again. We can see where we removed the sticker. I'm just gonna stretch out the wrap here. So there it is, right? You can see at the very bottom, we have a little bit of residue to clean up, right above the hole. And at the top, there's nothing. So overall, that went very, very well, but you have to be very, very careful about it. And again, I'm gonna show how to clean off this excess residue just after we do the next sticker. All right. So despite that Pokemon Red being the most valuable game, this is actually gonna be the hardest sticker to remove. And I'm gonna show you now why you have to be so careful with your nails. If you look here, someone has already tried to remove this sticker and done poorly. So this right here is blatant damage that you are gonna be docked for, probably more than if you just had the sticker left. You can see over here, they also removed a sticker where again, they dug their nail too deep into the box and the wrap. Now, why did I bring out the rubbing alcohol if Goof Off works so damn well? because this box cannot have goof off used on it. It will actually eat directly through it. Game Gear games have a different kind of plastic. You can see how stiff this is, how crinkly it is. It just is not the same at all. 
as other factory sealed games. And I'm gonna show you what Goof Off does to it just because this game already has a decent amount of damage and I don't want you to make this mistake yourself. I'm just gonna apply the Goof Off to a pretty inconspicuous spot and you can see how the plastic wrap and when I, when I apply it directly to a game, I'm just going to dry this off of it. I don't want it to be too wet because I don't want it to sink through the plastic wrap. So if you do, don't apply it to your skin, if you have easily irritated skin, the stuff is pretty corrosive, but okay. So I'm going to apply it actually to a side here. So look, you see what it's doing there? I'll put it in light. You see how it is turning dark? Look at that. Do you see how much that screws up the box? I'm just gonna lick a finger here and wipe it. Cause you can lessen the damage here. Look at that. That's what it's gonna do. If you use it on Game Gear games or stuff that it's just not supposed to be used on. And you're thinking, Greg, you just fucked up this game. Yep, but I did it for science and I did it for you guys. So heed my warning and do not use game and do not use goof off on Game Gear titles. Sorry to interrupt, just a quick note here. The more I looked at the Sonic on Game Gear, the more I realized that I'm gonna have to do some kind of experimentation myself. And I just don't feel comfortable putting that in this kind of tutorial video. If I find out a great method for removing them from Game Gear games, I'll obviously let you guys know, but just know that removing from Game Gear is very difficult due to the different kind of wrap they use. And with that said, we can just jump right into the cleaning. Okay, now let's get back to how I actually clean off the factory sealed games. And I do this to every single factory sealed game that I have ever owned. And I do it with the goof off because I think the goof off gets more dirt than the rubbing alcohol does. And it gets more of the unseen dirt as well as removing any kind of residue or whatever that you might miss. Again, you wanna locate your vent holes before you do any kind of cleaning. We already know that the red has vent hole line on this side and there's a vent hole line on this side as well. And this is where we bring out the Charmin finally. We can just grab two. And I use this so I can gauge how wet the paper is. I fold it in half and then I fold it again. Let me just open back up the goof off here. So like I said, fold it in half, fold it again. I cover it and apply some. You can't even really tell it's wet. But again, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna dab out the excess. You don't want there to be any kind of, you don't want this to be able to sink into one of the vent holes so you want to keep slapping it until it's just very lightly damp. Make it damp, damp, get rid of the excess, spread it around, and then you can pick up the game. And back where we had the left behinds, I'm just gonna fold it again so I can be very careful. I'm just gonna rub right here, right in between the two ventils, and it immediately takes it off. And because now it's so soft, or it's barely wet, I'm just gonna take it flat and rub the whole front of the game. And again, I'm just doing this on the wrap, not any of the box. And you can see, maybe you can see, I'll do the back and the sides first, then maybe you'll be able to see the amount of dirt I got off. Because even though you can't see dirt, there is dirt on these items, on the wrap, on the seal. So I just slightly give it a wrap, a wipe, and I'm not sure if it'll be seeable for you guys if I get closer, but you can just see there's a little bit of dirt that came off. Do you have to do something like this? No, this Pokemon Red's wrap probably isn't gonna be better or worse off if you do, but there are gonna be instances where you take the, where you take your toilet paper here and when it comes off, it's gonna actually have quite a bit of dirt on it. And the big thing that that did was it cleaned up right around the sticker removal where now we have no residue and just a very little square outline of where the sticker was. So again, it's way easier to do it with these because when you don't have to worry about the goof off absolutely wrecking the cardboard, because that's the thing. If you get the goof off into one of those holes, like I said, it is gonna absolutely wreck it. So you have to be extremely careful with that. And now using on a DVD case, I am a lot less careful because there's a lot less at risk, but you still wanna check all of your edges 
for rips, these are where I'd rip, these are where rips are going to be most common that you're going to miss. And if you get it on the case, it could actually cause some damage. So here I've let it, I've let this perforate a little bit. So we have a little bit of residue up there where we did the sticker removal that I'm going to get rid of. And if you just shine it in the light, you can see everywhere where there might be a little bit of dirt. Do the back edge, do the top edge. You don't have to worry about this loosening the Y folds or anything. All the actual, all the actual glue and whatnot is not shown. So you're safe to just rub and go at it. And this I can actually see in the light that I am getting some dirt off. So you should be able to see it here. So again, can you see there the amount of dirt I got off? where my fingers were pressing. The amount of discoloration on the toilet paper should show. And that's what it's all about because now this is perfectly cleaned. There's now no need to pay for cleaning at WADA or pay for cleaning at VGA when you can do it yourself like that for no money. A can of Goof Off is gonna cost you about $14 and it's gonna last your whole life. So the next one I'm gonna do this on is the Spirit Tracks. And this one actually has a couple of rips on this side of the game. So I want you, that's the type of stuff you need to be careful of right here. Cause that will actually get in and that could cause some damage. But again, I'm gonna take the goof off. I'm gonna rip this, fold it once, fold it twice, put it over the cover, get it. And now I'm just gonna let it air out. If you go and apply as soon as you do this, this is too wet. You're gonna leave here. I'll just dab the front of this where I don't think there's a rip. You're gonna actually leave water droplets if you can see them and you do not want to leave actual water droplets. You just wanna wipe it with as if it's a, a very lightly damp rag, but you don't wanna leave water droplets. So I'm just gonna dab this on my arm again here, get rid of some of the excess. And then I'm good to start wiping it. I'm just going to wipe this here. I'm going to wipe all sides of it, except for that one side where I showed you guys there was already a rip. And again, you can do this with alcohol if you don't feel comfortable using Goo Gone. That's not an issue. The Goo Gone can just get rid of more dirt and debris than the rubbing alcohol can, and it does it easier too. And there we go. There's very light discoloration on the paper here. I doubt you'd be able to see it, but it just shows again that we did take off a very light layer of dirt. And there's three games perfectly clean. I'm gonna show you guys one more here. This is a factory sealed N64 game. And I wanna do this again, cause you have to be very careful. So as soon as we grab it, we need to locate our vent holes. So we have a row of vent holes right here. On the top, we have a vent hole right here. On the back, we have another row of vent holes over on this side. You can see them there in the light. And you wanna be cautious of where those are because those are spots where when I'm rubbing, I lighten up. So if I'm going over these front vent holes, I'm gonna barely have any pressure on the paper while I go over it. Because if I'm pressing and I go over the vent holes, any kind of excess goof off that's sitting in here, any kind of excess that you have not aired out is gonna seep right into these vent holes and it's gonna damage the cardboard underneath. It's gonna leave a discoloration mark. You saw how the goof off immediately discolored the Sonic Chaos there, it's gonna do the exact same thing to the cardboard of the Extreme G. So once again here, I'm gonna rip some toilet paper, fold it once, fold it twice, take the goof off. And now with cardboard game here, much like I was with the Pokemon Red, I'm gonna be even more careful than I am when I'm doing DVD style games. So I'm really gonna air this out. I'm really gonna dab out the excess. Again, if you have sensitive skin, do not do this. It's probably gonna cause you irritation. But I wanna make sure that if I rub my hand with it, I don't see any droplets or anything. And then once I'm confident of that, I'm gonna take it to the game and begin rubbing. And again, as I go over the vent holes, I'm barely putting any pressure here. I'm just looking to clean off any kind of excess dirt, debris, anything that might, anything that you really have to comb over to find with a naked eye and stuff that you might not even see. A lot of the dirt on these games and on the cellophane, you might only be able to see once you're digging into it with a magnifying glass. 
but if you just do this quick clean with goof off, you don't have to worry about them finding that in grading. Now, once you've finished doing your little wipe off, you could even take a cloth, a microfiber cloth, and wipe off the game just to get rid of any kind of excess, any kind of toilet paper from the wiping of this. And actually on the back here, there is a little bit of sticker residue. So I'm gonna rub a little bit harder over here where I can see in the light that there was a bit of residue. And looking at this here, you actually can't, you wouldn't be able to see on the camera what I got rid of, but if you can see it when I lay it beside the other, when I lay it beside the other toilet paper things, you can see it. And at the top of this box here, you can see that there was actually a hang tab that was removed. You can see the outline right here. I removed a hang tab earlier before because I didn't want it on there. And that's the gist of the tutorial. If you want to start cleaning your own factory sealed games, removing the stickers, not paying WADA, not paying VGA, practice on something cheap first and get your confidence to start doing it on more expensive items. It can be done. It's not that difficult, but if you do screw up, you can cause a lot of damage where it might just be worth it for you to pay water or pay VGA rather than doing it yourself. I hope you learned something. Until next time.